um, Dr. Song, since you're the expert on AI, it's your field of study. <laughs> <laughs> your field of study. Um, so we were talking about the limitations um, of AI. So there's certain skills that seems like artificial intelligence that are human that artificial intelligence like can't do. Like that seems like an idea some people have. Do you think that's true? Are there limitations to artificial intelligence, or is it, what are the what's the potential? There are, yeah, obviously, there are limitations. There are things that they yeah, can do, you know, in principle right now. Right now, you, you can't write, you know, for instance, a funny story. He doesn't understand humor, right? Uh, machine learning algorithms, they don't work well with small data, you know. So there are limitations, there are uh, issues. They, AI uh, doesn't understand human values very well. So there are limitations, and uh, uh, we are working hard, you know, to overcome these limitations. But it will take a lot of time. It's just the beginning, I guess. Um, so is there a possibility of these limitations being overcome in the future? I guess that's kind of a hard question to answer. It's very difficult to predict. It's very, it, it will eventually, but it will be might take a lot of time. So I would assume if the uh, if it did come to the point, we would be under the issue of what would humans do? Like, what would our job be with artificial intelligence? Um, do you guys have any um, opinions on the matter that you heard someone else bring up that you would like to address? I'm sorry, Cal. I can't answer that question. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I get. I mean, just brief, just to briefly say that, like, I'm I'm not worried that people are going to run out of like productive things to do. But I think that that computers are and, and AI is fundamentally like a tool for the. It's 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 an input into uh in, into into producing stuff that people like that people value. Um, and so I think that it will rearrange the activities that humans do. And it'll re re rearrange that, but I don't think that people will run out of um, out of productive uh, things to do. Um, yeah, it's one of the things that we saw in the discussion. Um, we've been worried about the same basic labor issues about technology putting people out of jobs, about uh, uh, first mechanization, then automation. Um, for a hundred plus years, and we have science fiction writers. I just, because of the 50th year anniversary, uh, 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 tip my hat to uh, Kubrick in 2001, and uh, uh, we've seen uh, folks discussing and thinking about these issues for a long time, and we're still here. We're still finding uh, uh, crazy stuff to do almost every single day. Um, I hope someone recognized that as a slight reference to Snoop Dogg. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, and humans are uh, innovative, we're always going to be looking for stuff to do, and just all the great things about us. Now, I, I think that the challenge is, as I said, that the rate of unemployment change versus the rate of our ability to adapt to changing circumstances, and things are going to change, and we do need to think uh, more uh, laterally about um, what do we do? How do we accommodate changing industries? And uh, it's not enough to say, oh, workforce retraining. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so and so, 50 year old person who just lost your job that you've had for 30 years, we're going to teach you to code. That's not the answer. Yeah, so I would actually like to, to talk about that a little bit as well. So, um, you know, at, at, in 1900 or so, I think something like 40% of US employment was in agriculture and farming. And now it's something like 2%. So what happened? Well, people are doing other stuff now. Uh, uh, you know, the tractor came about and it eliminated the need for a lot of manual labor and that, that was fundamentally a good thing. And, and um, now there's this question of like, well, so now all the, ch all the children of farmers are now, are now less likely to become farmers and they're going to, uh, to college or they're doing other things with their time. Uh, so there's this question of, well, what about the, what about the older generation that gets displaced? And I think that's a really, really important question. Um, and I think that economists are not 
uh, do not have a lot of answers for that question. Uh, I wish that they had better answers than they do. But um, you know, typically the skills that you have that you apply to your job are built up over your whole lifetime, right? Over you know through through edu your education, but also on the job as you learn your experience and so forth. You know, and so if you lose your job and you have to retrain for something else, it becomes very hard because you lose all that human capital. You start you, you're, you're back to you're back to the baseline, and also people have a hard time taking uh, wage. Uh, uh, cuts, um, and that's another. That, I mean, that, so I, I, I do think that, that this is a, this is a political question. It's a it's a question about uh, economics as well, which is how do we how do we facilitate? What's the role of government? What's the role uh, in, in terms of facilitating people to sort of somehow relocate uh, either across space, across geographies, or across uh, sectors, across jobs? I think I think uh, there are a lot of um, you know there are a lot of there are, there are going to be some winners and some losers here, and I think I think you know it's it's important to think about what are the types of policies that can help the people who do end up losing. Um, so, okay, um, there was some talk about um, the importance of liberal art education, or maybe liberal thinking along those lines, and like there are some hints that the current structure of our education system might um, be problematic with the focus on like the importance of these skills in the future. Um, and Dr. Hassan was talking about how there's there's a growing need for people to be involved in this field, this technical field of artificial intelligence. So I guess um, I'm wondering what each of your opinions are on how um, this um, flexible skill training should, like how that, what that should look like and how that works with the system that we already have. I guess I'll, I'll start uh, and I'll try to be brief. Um, uh, the best hedge you all can make for your future careers is to be diverse thinkers, to not be tied to a specific field. Beyond that, um, I'm about to say something that should be really scary. I probably am among the 20 most sophisticated law professors uh, in the country when it comes to understanding of this stuff. And I barely understand it. Hopefully you all can have gotten that from my discussion of it. Um, uh, we desperately need, in the law, you all to come to us and help us make good decisions. And you all to come talk to the economists. And you all to come talk to uh, the philosophers. And you all to come talk to other people who are going to be affected by this and can be thinking about it. And conversely, let me tell you, um, there's a huge discussion in Washington, D.C. right now about how computer scientists uh, have zero clue, zero understanding, zero appreciation for basic principles of ethics. There is a steel fist that is about to come hammering down on the industry. And this is, uh, I, hopefully it's not going to happen, but I have not seen uh, in the past 15 years or so uh, politicians and uh, political actors as angry and upset at Silicon Valley as they are right now. Um, and a lot of harm, a lot of real pain is coming uh, to the tech industry because uh, there's been a lack of interest and concern for philosophical matters. We're just going to do the technology. It's up to everyone else to pick up the mess. You all desperately need us helping you understand these broader societal, broader social issues because the, uh, the patterns that we see, uh, law doesn't change before the problem occurs laws change after the situation is really bad and we need dramatic, immediate uh, uh, shocks to the system. And we're reaching that point right now in a lot of uh, the tech sector uh, where uh, uh, a very blunt instrument is about to uh, start changing the shape of, uh, of the industry. And with AI, with the next generations of technology, you don't want that to happen. At the ground level, at the design level, you want to be thinking about these things so that the lawyers never get involved. Yeah, so uh, I want to add something. Um, it, it's not that uh, the people who do AI, they're not uh, concerned with this issue, this lack of ethics, this lack of you know, human aspect in the design of AI. Uh, there's, a, there's a growing interest in developing a special kind of AI. It's called uh, humanistic AI, human compatible AI. And you can't do that unless you have you know, this uh, deep knowledge in liberal arts. You have to know philosophy, you have to know ethics, you have to know economics, 
uh, you have to understand people. You have to understand uh, human values. It's not just you know business. It's not just uh, making money. You know what Facebook and organizations like that are doing. It, you know it, it's not it, it, it's not compatible with human values. Okay, you're collecting data. You're manipulating data. You're manipulating uh, human psychology. Right? You're putting human against human beings. Totally bad, and we're using AI as a tool to do that, right? So we are talking about AI that is compatible to humanity, AI that that can work with humanity. And I have, you know, in, in the later part of my presentation, I have some slides on that, in which uh, we have evidence uh, to show that when human and AI work together, we can actually produce better results. But to get there. We have to have this kind of interdisciplinary, you know, uh, communication. We have to understand each other, which we don't uh, have much now. Uh, you know, for example, how many how many people in this building are really really interested about philosophy? How many people in this building would really want to know about Kant? You know, uh, how, how many people would, would be really interested about know about you know Karl Marx, for instance? You know. We are not interested. We, we don't want to know what kind of mess we will create by, you know, by creating a product. What kind of implication uh, in terms of law uh, and politics it could produce. We, we don't care. Okay. We, we we build an app. We come up with a cool idea. We we build an app, and then we just want to be successful. There is this dogma in this country, in this world, that you know, learn computer science. Uh, learn coding, build an app, and you can be successful. You are the greatest human being, which is totally, totally wrong. And you, you don't, the fear is that you don't even understand that you are thinking in a, in a totally wrong, wrong, wrong way, right? So unless you broaden your understanding, unless you broaden your you know, knowledge in liberal arts, you can't really get out of this mess. I would like to add a little bit more, which is to say that um, that the purpose of taking liberal arts courses or even majoring in the liberal arts is not necessarily to become an ethical, I mean, yes, you, you gain this, this ethical type of thinking, but I, I also think you gain problem solving skills. You, you learn how to synthesize information, connect kind of disparate uh, uh, aspects. Um, I, I mean, I think everybody, uh, everybody gains from reading. Uh, um, you know, and, and grappling with with texts and, and and writing about them, and these skills that you learn about uh, uh, when you take courses and when you read Homer or when you read Dante or whoever it is, you learn uh, these skills that are valuable when you have a, a, a job in AI. Like I'm, I'm telling you, like the, the biggest mistake in college that you can make is say like I'm gonna major in accounting, then I'm gonna become an accountant, and that's gonna be my job, and I'm gonna have. A, I mean, maybe. But like maybe like uh, maybe not maybe uh, maybe all accounts will become completely uh, um, uh, replaced by by AI. But if you develop these these skills of thinking broadly, of thinking critically, of of synthesizing information, of learning how to communicate ideas um, and connect disparate uh, uh, thoughts, uh, um, you will have valuable skills uh, in in the future. Um, uh, if things don't pan out the way the way we expect them to.